Hi everyone, it's Bence here. One of my favorite asset creator on the Unity Asset Store is Nature Manufacture. They make photoscanned asset packs, each pack is centered around one specific biome or team. I was collecting their packs one by one whenever there was a discount or I really needed something, but right now all their packs can be bought on Humble Bundle for a ridiculously low price. On this occasion, I thought I would make something using only their assets to share with you how I get from the idea to the final composition. Here is what we will end up making, a small chapel above a lake in an autumn forest. So let's get into the tutorial. Ok, I have a rough idea about what I want to make. I want to make a chapel in the middle of a forest. I start by looking for reference images. At this stage I am choosing images that might be very different in terms of moods and colors, but that is fine for now, we will clarify it later. I put all my selected images into a single picture, so that I will be able to see all of them at the same time. Next, I open a new Unity scene. I am using an old project, so I have all my assets already imported. If you are just starting out, go in to the package manager, look for the package you want to install in the search box, click on download and after that import. I personally will be using the HD render pipeline, but you can use almost any render pipeline and Unity versions, Nature Manufacture kindly configured their assets to work with almost everything, but I had problems in the past with beta builds, so I would not recommend using those. I would recommend using the latest TechStream release build or LTS build. Since Nature Manufacture assets are configured to work with the built-in render pipeline out of the box, if you are making either an HDRP or URP project, make sure to run the compatibility package first. Also, read the readme file for any extra settings. For example, subsurface scattering profiles in HDRP. I ended up using 5 nature manufacture asset packs. These are the River Auto Material 2019, PBR Graveyard and Forest Dynamic Nature. The fourth pack was the Mountain Environment, but I only used the background mountains from that. The fifth was the Meadow Environment, but I only used the fences. You can leave out these last two if you want, or you can use more assets from these, it is up to you. First, I add a terrain object, then look for something that resembles a chapel. Lucky for me, there is already one pre-built. I put it into the scene for scale. Then I start sculpting the terrain. By the way, I use the Unity Terrain Tools package for edit functionality. I really like these two reference images, so I am thinking about making a mountain range and a road that leads up to a ledge on which the chapel will be. I also add the lake polygon at this early stage, since it will occupy a large part of the map. Then I add the background mountains. After a little more sculpting, I am satisfied with the general shape of the terrain, so I add layers to the terrain. In this case, I am using the layers from the forest environment pack. At this moment, I only want a single texture just to have something on it. I will do the actual painting later. After that, I put some trees into the scene. As you can see, these trees already have autumn colors. That is, because, as I mentioned, it is an older Unity project and I altered the material of the trees for a previous environment art. If you are not comfortable with such a thing, you can just use the trees from the Autumn Valley level pack. I have put a few trees to the opposite side of the lake to see how they look from the distance. I noticed that I need to change the color of the billboard material separately for each tree. I then added the tree prefabs to the map and painted some larger trees around the map. You can see that as we go further away, the shadows disappear from under the tree. This makes our forest look very bad when looking at it from next to the chapel. This can be fixed by adjusting the shadows, so it is the perfect time to add the sky and fog volume. What I usually do is that I add everything I need from the lighting, sky and shadowing categories into my sky and fog volume and I will create a separate volume for post-processing later. During this time I also adjusted the materials of the background mountains to fit the mood better. Adding the shadows override to the post-process volume and turning max distance on fixes the missing shadows from under the faraway trees. I started to paint over faraway parts of the terrain. I wanted to have something more brown, so I used the fallen leaves layer. I also added a few more terrains and trees for better coverage. Next, I added a reverse spline. I wanted to have a very small stream, so I decreased the width. I adjusted the materials of my selected river profile to get smaller waves. Then, 
I put a few details around the starting position of my stream. I use some walls and arches from the PBR graveyard pack. It is generally not recommended to start with the small details, but I wanted to see how it looks and whether this arrangement looks good at all. After that, I finally started to put the large details in. I used the stones and rock prefabs from the forest environment pack. There are two types of prefabs, one with a fallen leaves texture over them and one without it. I originally wanted to use the prefabs without the leaves, but I altered the color for one of my previous environment art projects and did not want to mess with that, so I used instead the rocks with the leaves. I added another reverse spline, this time to make a road. I ended up removing it from the final scene, but you can add it nonetheless if you want. After that, I started to add the middle size details, a bit smaller rocks and the pre-built bridge from the forest environment pack. I adjusted the terrain around the bridge and my stream. Then I added even smaller rocks to the edge of the stream. After that, I I started to experiment with the trees around the chapel. I chose a few larger ones with dense leaves and also scaled them up a bit. Next, I added a fence line to the edge. I used pre-built fence parts wherever I could and added the more unique parts as separate logs. I must mention that during time to time it is worth arranging your assets in the hierarchy under separate empty game objects. You can use them as folders, basically. At this point I started to add the small details such as small stones, roots, mushrooms, branches and tree trunks. Arranging these very small details can be tiresome, so I would recommend using some kind of a prefab painter. There are a few great ones in the asset store. In this project I arranged them by hand to make following the video easier. After that I started to paint the foliage. I chose a few ferns and grasses and added them to the terrain. I added them as tree objects first because they had LOD groups, but later I remembered there are versions without LOD groups and those can be added to the terrain as detail meshes as well. It is better to add foliage as details, if possible, because details are rendered more efficiently, but I am not sure how that works exactly. I also added ivy to the corner of the chapel. I adjusted the LOD group settings so it stays visible from further away. If you are making a game this is a bad approach, but in our case it is fine. I painted some more foliage and adjusted the terrain layers as well. After I was satisfied with the amount of details, I I added a global volume for the post-processing. I did not use too many functions though. After that I added reflection probes. They improve lighting quite a lot, however it is good to keep in mind that the best lighting Unity can offer comes from baking the lighting. This can take a long time, especially for larger maps. That is why I am not really using it. This is where I remove the road. You can see I had some issue with the camera for some reason, but enabling the camera stop nonce option for both the scene and editor cameras fixed the issue. I adjusted my reflection probes, directional light angle and I added a planar reflection probe to the lake. I also experimented a bit with fog, but I like this sunny autumn afternoon feel of the scene, so I ended up keeping the fog at a minimum. However, I plan to explore this scene with different lighting setups in the future. All that remained was to add the master sequence, find a few good spots for my cameras and render the image sequence. If you are interested in learning a bit more about making a cinematic in Unity, I have a dedicated video on the subject. You can find it in the right hand corner. I used DaVinci Resolve to create a video out of my rendered images and did some post processing as well. I am no way an expert in post processing using DaVinci Resolve, I am more or less just fooling around. If you want to learn more about the subject, I can recommend William Fosher's channel. He makes his renders in Unreal Engine but uses DaVinci Resolve for video rendering and post processing. Post processing can greatly enhance the visual quality of any image or small video, but it is also very subjective. So congratulations, you have just made a scene using the Unity engine that not only looks good, but it is also suitable as a game level. As I explained at the beginning of the video, this environment only uses assets made by Nature Manufacturer. Their whole asset collection is available as a humble bundle till the 6th of November for a very good price. I can recommend this bundle to anyone who is doing anything in the Unity engine and it is almost a must if you are considering making environment art in Unity. I hope you have learned something from this video, if you did, give it a like and subscribe for more. Thank you very much for watching, see you in the next one, bye!